Hello everyone. Uh, let's continue our uh, uh, classes on uh, causation of disease. So in this uh, session, I'll be covering about germ theory, epidemiological triad, multifactorial causation, and web of causation. The other few things like uh, natural history, risk factors, and spectrum of disease should be covered in future classes. Okay. So I spoke of disease we had covered in detail. Uh, so uh, there were a lot of theories um, present before the germ theory how the disease is caused all those theories were supernatural theory theory of humus humus means a bad products in uh, our body theory of contagion uh, theory of uh, miasma miasma is nothing but uh, bad air which causing disease and theory of spontaneous generation all these theories were conspiracy theories with not much uh, without any scientific evidences so one of the first uh, theory with scientific evidence was uh, germ theory so it was started when a uh, french bacteriologist uh, you know louis pasteur he found out uh, the presence of bacteria in air and he advanced the theory of spontaneous generation then after that period robert koch came into uh, the limelight of bacteriology so it is known as the golden era of bacteriology he found out uh, the anthrax caused by some bacteria uh, after that many bacteria were discovered gonococcus typhus uh, cholera diphtheria so at that point of time when germ theory was there people believe that or it was believed that a particular agent entering into man and causing a disease mostly microbes okay so robert koch uh, postulated a theory that is germ theory it is completely uh, emphasizing on the presence of microbes in producing a disease so he uh, with his scientific background he inoculated bacteria and produced infections so he had evidences so his postulates were a specific microorganism is always associated with a given disease because a disease is always caused by a microorganism and it can be isolated from a disease animal and it can also be grown in a laboratory and the grown uh, new microbe can cause and it can transfer to healthy animal and again it can be isolated from the animal so these were the coarse postulates it's a part of germ theory but the uh, theory had a limitation because it was unable to explain why some people suffer the disease after exposure to microorganism not all because not everyone is getting um, the microorganisms is not producing symptoms or not producing uh, disease that is tubercle bacilli so that is um, a bacteria of uh, tuberculosis so this was the main pro problem because some people carry the bacteria as carrier state without producing any symptoms okay so this lead to the formation of the second concept that is epidemiological triad because the tuberculosis was not able to explain by the theory germ theory and cause postulates because even after having presence of microbes the, all the people are not producing uh, symptoms are not having any disease so the germ theory was rejected and the second one or the next theory that is epidemiological or ecological triad theory came into existence because uh, it need to be an interaction of agent environment and host or the imbalance of these three factors can cause a disease like tuberculosis okay so the epidemiological triad there should be an imbalance between these three factors agent means the our tuberculosis bacilli environment means the environment uh, which where the uh, person is living and host is the immunity factors or the host factors so all these factors has has to be compiled for a, uh, for this disease to be uh, happen so before the germ theory was explaining only this part of the epidemiological triad now we have to uh, concentrate on environmental and host factors 
So agent is something which is coming from outside. It can be biological, mechanical, nutrition, like deficiency or physical or chemical agent. And host factors, it depends upon the genetics, age, gender, its literacy level, its income, lifestyle, immunity. Everything has a contributing factor for the disease. And the environment, it's depend upon the customs he follows psychological factors biological factors and physical factors so all these three factors that is environmental agent and host factors has a role in producing a disease that is epidemiological trial uh, so the equilibrium should be lost or the equilibrium should be disrupted for the disease to be happen so this model explains that some persons do not suffer from the disease even though they harbor the pathogens which was not able to explain by the germ theory but the problem arises when it is not applicable for non-infectious and chronic diseases like coronary heart diseases mental illness and such diseases where the disease is caused by multiple factors so this has to lead to the next theory or next concept as is multifactorial causation of disease that is a disease is caused by many factors so it was first introduced by uh, Gallen in 1, uh, 130, 150 AD. It was very uh, ago. Uh, then in uh, Pittenkofer of Germany also introduced this theory during this era of 19th century. But it was overshadowed by the germ theory because that was the golden era of bacteriology. Because uh, all these factors like social, economic, culture and psychological factors has to be there for a disease to be uh, produced. So otherwise the disease will not happen, especially the chron chronic type and the lifestyle diseases. Because it is uh, uh, factors which factors like poverty, illiteracy, ignorance and poor living conditions, overcrowding all will contribute to the disease. So tuberculosis is not just uh, due to a bacteria, it is also due to poverty, overcrowding and malnutrition. So uh, the modern diseases are the diseases of civilization like lung cancer, diabetes, coronary heart disease, mental illness are mainly due to the multiple factors or the multifactorial position. So, you know that for example excess of fat uh, intake and smoking lack of physical exercise obesity are all involved in pathogenesis of coronary heart disease we just cannot point out a single factor all factors have uh, its contribution in producing this disease so that is the um, multifactorial disease it is also comes under a broad aspect of epidemiological triad because we can put all these factors into epidemiological factors like causative factors, environmental, cultural, other factors and the host factors. It is a different version of the same epidemiological triad. Okay, that is uh, about the multifactorial causation. And the last one is web of causation. A little more complicated uh, concept because this model of disease suggested by McMahon and Puck and this model is basically suited for chronic diseases because the same diseases which we were explaining multifactorial this is little more advanced okay so this is like a lot of factors which has intricate relationship between each other and we cannot just point out a one factor or two factor because all factors are interrelated and giving a complex relationship and producing the disease we can just take an example of myocardial infarction. So basic factors are changes in lifestyle, smoking and stress. Stress is causing emotional disturbance which is ultimately releasing hypertension and it causes walls of artery changes and it gives coronary pollution. At the same time aging also causes hypertension. At the same time changes in lifestyle, lot of food habit, the obesity, it also results in hypertension and obesity also results in hyperlipidemia that results in atherosclerosis that also goes to the coronary occlusion so all these factors are interrelated we just cannot put these factors into a triangle shape so it is just like a, a web 
uh, of all factors which is interrelated and causing the disease so this is what exactly uh, nowadays we are following in the chronic diseases or lifestyle diseases rather than multifactorial disease causation this is almost like multifactorial but the interrelation is more specific in this web of causation so that's all about the various concepts so we have discussed germ theory of disease then the epidemiological triad multifactorial causation and the web of causation okay so isometric phenomena we already discussed so all these factors are explaining how the disease causation is happening uh, after this all those supernatural theories okay so it started from germ theory then the uh, then the epidemiological triad then it comes the um, after epidemiological triad this multifactorial causation then the web of causation okay so now we have uh, natural history of disease and spectrum of disease that will be covered in next uh, session okay so the concept of disease uh, is um, the other uh, videos are available in the playlist so you can go and check the playlist for more videos thank you